The so-called trial of the century was truly about the crime of the century. Never before had such a famous person committed such a brutal crime. Yet shockingly, Johnny Cochran and his defense team had convinced the jury that O.J. was innocent, and almost half a nation that the jury gave the right verdict. In your opinion, is O.J. innocent or guilty? I think he's guilty, but I mean, who knows? Guilty. Guilty. I think he's guilty. Uh, innocent. I think he was uh, innocent. I'm really not sure. Guilty. No comment on that one. Guilty. I think he was guilty. I think he's guilty. Guilty. Innocent? I think they just didn't prove his guilt. Innocent. Guilty. Guilty. The great racial divide on the question of O.J.'s guilt continues. Along with an air of mystery espoused across racial lines, the claims that O.J. is innocent, or that there was reasonable doubt, or the belief that evidence was or might have been planted. Do you believe that any evidence was planted? You know, I don't know. It's planted. I believe everything was done with so a fine tooth comb. It might. I think it might have been. No. Somewhat. I don't think so. No, I do not. I don't think I had a feeling that things were planted. I don't think so. Yes. I think that's a strong possibility. I don't believe it was planted. They just didn't prove the case. <laughs> no. Probably not. I think the glove was planted. The gloves. I have uh, no idea now. Oh, the gloves. The gloves? The gloves. You know, there's a lot of strange events going on with the case. The massive body of evidence was overwhelming. Among the most compelling, there was the trail of blood matching with OJ's blood. Five blood drops leaving the crime scene at the left of bloody shoe prints. The blood stain above the driver's side door handle on OJ's Bronco. Multiple blood stains inside the Bronco. And the blood drops going right up OJ's driveway and right into his house. There was the cut on O.J.'s left middle finger and the left-handed bloody glove found by the bodies. There was a blue cap found at the crime scene with 12 hairs matching with O.J.'s hair and fibers matching with the carpet in the Bronco. There was blood on the Bronco steering wheel matching a mixture of O.J.'s and Nicole's blood. Blood on the driver's side floor of the Bronco consistent with Nicole's blood. Blood on the Bronco center console matching a mixture of O.J.'s and Ron Goldman's blood. There was the right-handed bloody glove found on O.J.'s estate matching O.J.'s, Nicole's, and Ron's blood, Nicole's and Ron's hair, Ron's shirt fibers, and Bronco carpet fibers. There were DNA tests giving us astronomical odds, like the odds that the blood found on O.J.'s sock belonged to anyone other than Nicole was 1 in 7.7 .7 billion. We'll never hear this story told by the one man who made the trial of the century come to be. Yet this is his story. Through all the evidence that his valiant struggle left for us, he spoke loud and clear. We could hear him say, I'm Ron Goldman. On the night of June 12th, 1994, I was murdered by Arnthal James Simpson, affectionately known as OJ, the Juice, a hero to many and loved by everyone, but no one knew him like I did. Now we'll follow the evidence on a short walk to truth to 875 Bundy Drive on the night of June 12, 1994. Through a reenactment, we'll trace OJ's steps from 9.35 to 10.55 p.m., the time frame that no one saw or spoke to him. It's time that we all witness the reenactment of the crime of the century.